Hello, welcome back. Happy Easter. It is that time of year. That time of year where we get to rejoice. We get to be glad, be happy. Give thanks for what God did, for what Jesus did at the cross. The greatest super secret spy plan ever done in the history of super secret plans. No one knew, not even the devil himself knew what God was up to, what Jesus was up to. It's so awesome. And we get to discuss it. And I'm so excited because this is our very first Easter service as Grace Freedom Church. And I am blessed and honored to be delivering that to you today. So, uh, just so you know, as always, we will be taking communion at the end of this. And you'll, you'll want to have some bread, cookies, crackers, whatever, and some juice, water. And we're going to be taking communion and just giving thanks and celebrating what the Lord Jesus did on the cross for us. But what I want to get into tonight, I want to get, I really want to dig, dive in right now tonight i called this message limitless because as we're going to find out we're going to find out and we're going to dive into this as when jesus went to the cross not just when he went but when he was risen from the cross and the final receipt was given that he defeated sin he defeated death he defeated the devil you are now entering into his limitless power and possibilities for your life. See, there's this, there's this movie that Bradley Cooper was in. Okay, and it's actually called Limitless. I haven't seen it in a long time, but if I remember correctly, in that movie, Bradley Cooper is kind of this guy who um, he just doesn't really have it together. You know, he's lazy. I think he's an author and just not really thriving. You know, life's a mess, house is a mess, he's a mess, and just a mess all over mentally. And then all of a sudden, one day, you know, someone gives him this little this little pill. He takes it, and all, and all of a sudden, it just changes everything about his brain, his mind. He he sees clearly. He starts. He writes and finishes his book. He cleans himself up. He changes his life around. Every piece of him starts to change because of this one little pill. And he keeps taking it and he keeps taking it and he keeps taking it and he keeps growing and becomes, I think at the end he's like running for governor or president or something like that. And there's like this other thing going on. But, but it's because of this little pill that everything changes for him. He has clarity in what he's doing. He has clarity in who he is. And what came to me as I was studying for this week was this idea that that is the Word of God. That is Jesus Christ. And as we take these bite-sized, small portions of His Word daily, as we continue, the transformation begins. So Jesus talked about, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Jesus is the kingdom of God. Jesus is the picture of everything his ministry is and was. He is this kingdom of God. In Luke 17, here's what it says in the Amplified. Luke 17, 21. It says this, Nor people will say, Look, here it is, or there it is, for the kingdom of God is among you because of my presence. Jesus brought with him the kingdom. And we've talked about this. Okay, in past messages, Jesus is God's will in action. The things that we see and hear Jesus do is, is living in the kingdom of God. It's living in his word and what the word says for your life. Imagine just taking a small daily pill, a dose of the word every single day. It doesn't matter if it's the same verse. It can be a different verse, but chewing on it as a promise that's for you. And letting his promises sink deeply into you and just rejoicing over them. 
imagine the transfer, transformation that will take place within you because that's what Jesus wants for you. The best is yet to come in your life. It's for those who believe and receive it. Jesus is never going to make you receive him, take him. That wouldn't be his love. That wouldn't be this picture of love. But when we choose him, we go on this un crazy, unfathomable ride that just is, is so cool. And I'm on it right now, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. The things that God has brought me through from uh, just drugs and alcohol and, and just, you know, not great relationships and being in the wrong places at the wrong time. And he brought me into freedom. I, you know, I, I don't even drink. You know, and, and I'm in the right place at the right time so much because he's positioning me because I want him to position me because I continue to just seek and find all about his goodness. And we're going to go into his goodness right now and we're going to dive into it and, and just see the love of Jesus Christ and why today and as we celebrate Easter because we should celebrate Jesus like we celebrate Easter every single day. If we got this excited every single day about Jesus and not just one day a year, oh, how different things would be. So we're going to be in Colossians 1.13. Okay. Colossians 1.13 says this. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have the redemption, the forgiveness of, of sins in verse 14 before we dive into that if you have a bible out in front of you or an app flip over to let's go to colossians 2 okay verse 13 and you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh god made alive together with him having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its illegal demands. Then he set aside, then he set it aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and the authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him, in Jesus. Let's imagine you have a debt. Maybe it's a house debt. It's a car payment. It doesn't matter what it is, but you owe a bank, you owe a creditor, you owe somebody money. You go to pay that debt. And as you call and you pick up the phone, and you say, hello, you know, my name is Steven. I want to pay off my house debt. Here's the loan number. Here's the payoff amount. I'd like to pay it off. And they say, okay, one moment, please. And they go and they look and they come back to you and they say, sir, Ma'am, we don't have a record of your debt anymore. Well, well, what do you mean you don't have a record of my debt? It means that we don't have a record of your debt anywhere in this bank that you owe money on that loan or on that house. We don't have a record of it. Well, what would that mean? It would mean you have to pay nothing. You have to do nothing. That the loan and the debt that you owed was completely forgiven. That is what happened at the cross. When Jesus, I, I had an awesome time. We, we, we had to do some shopping. My wife's getting ready. We're getting ready to have our third baby. Any moment. Okay, any moment. All right, after the service, any moment. Okay. But we went out to Sam's Club and we got to, on the drive home, we started talking about Jesus and Easter and what it all means. And I had this pleasure of, of discussing with my two daughters that, because they always say, you know, Dad, Daddy, you know, the bad guys came and they took Jesus. And I said, no, that's not true. And like, what? That's my, my younger, what? Yeah, they came and took Jesus. 
And I said, no, here's why it's incorrect. Jesus let them take him. And I said, nobody could ever take Jesus until he was ready. Because if you remember, they surrounded him to push him off a cliff once. And he looked at them and he said two words, I am. And they fell to their knees and he walked through the midst of them. He just walked away unharmed, unscathed. And there were several times they wanted to arrest Jesus, but they could never touch him. It wasn't until Jesus decided to give himself up. Because when we look at it, when we look at this redemptive nature, when we look at redeeming, redemption is the action of gaining or regaining possession of something in exchange for payment. That's redemption. See, Jesus is now giving himself for our freedom. Because when he was going to go to the cross, this is what he ha- this is what happened. Okay? He he's at the he he gets his lashed and he gets whipped and his back and his face is completely marred because when they whipped him, these whips they had little pieces of hooks and they had these uh, uh, pieces of clay and things would just shred them and rip them apart. And so they're whipping them and they're lashing them and they're laughing about it. And, and they put the crown of thorns on him and he carries his cross up, up, the, up the mountain and, and they're looking at him and, and, and everybody's laughing and cheering because here's this guy who thinks he's the son of God and, and he is, they think he's an idiot and the Romans all think he's stupid and he just, here's this guy And what they don't realize is it's all part of the plan. It's all part of the redemption plan to get back what was taken from the very beginning in the garden when the devil stole from Adam and Eve and he tricked them. And authority went from Adam and Eve over the earth. It went to Satan. And we were bound by by Satan's evil and the evil plans that he has because his, his idea is to come and to infiltrate your mind both through the, through the gospel and through the church. And without it, he wants to convince you, you don't need Jesus. Jesus isn't good for you. You're, those things are a lie. The Bible is a lie. He, he has pastors preaching that the things of the Bible aren't for us today. And <laughs> the Bible talks about... Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. These things are very much as for when they were done, from when they were written, and for where they are, are we are today. Everything in this word is for us because of Jesus. And, and, and the devil comes to try to trick you and to make you think you don't need the word, don't stay in the word, don't pray the word, don't do anything with the word. You don't need it. Just keep living your life. And if God shows up, great. But if he doesn't, he must not love you. But the thing about that is this. God gave his only son for you. In a true love story, he sacrificed his son for you because he saw you. And as Jesus' lip being lifted up on that cross and being nailed The devil and his demons are laughing. They're laughing and they're cheering because ha ha ha, we did it. We got rid of we got rid of the Son of God. We've won. We knew we would win. But wait. See what happened was the devil presented himself to Jesus while Jesus was walking in his ministry. And he said, hey, throw yourself off this cliff because the Bible says angels will come and lift you up and protect you. See, the devil was trying to trick and see what would go on if Jesus really threw himself off the mountain. Would angels come and save him? Because if angels would come and save him, then he would know he couldn't kill Jesus. And that's the goal. He wants to kill the Son of God. So as Jesus is being nailed to the cross and every demon and devil is laughing, 
and they hear him say, oh, look, he's saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God has forsaken him. We've won. And then all of a sudden, Jesus says, finished. What was finished? The first part of the plan. Because the next part of the plan begins the redemption love of God. The next part of the plan is Pentecost. The next part of the plan is the church growing. The next part of the plan are thousands of peoples being saved. The next part of the plan the devil never saw coming because Jesus took the keys of hell and he said, I've overcome sin and I've overcome your power, devil. For those who want to believe and take it and receive it. You see, <clears throat> Jesus gave us this righteousness. Let's, let's read this. Let's flip over to 2 Corinthians really quick. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. Here's what it says. For our sakes, for your sake and for mine, he made Jesus, God made Jesus to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in Jesus we might become the righteousness of God. So Jesus is taking every shred of sin, past, present, and future. The, the way, I'm getting ahead of myself here, okay? But he took every sin on him and he made us righteous. And this is so important for you to understand. Let me explain this to you as simply as I can. You are made, the, you are the righteousness of God because of Jesus. And let this sink in. You, you, child of God, are righteous. You are in right standing with God. No sin from the past. No sin that you do today. No sin that you will do tomorrow, next week, next year. None of it is not held against you. All of it was put on Jesus. That's why he said it was finished. Your sin is... That you, that you had. And you know what? It's so good. This is his goodness. Even the, even the people who under the law had to, who were killing bulls and goats, using the blood of bulls and goats for their forgiveness offerings and offering those sacrifices, even those people were forgiven. That's how good God's goodness is. Because there, God doesn't live in time. He lives outside of time. That's how good he is. That's why he could say it's finished. And when Jesus finishes it, it's done. It's complete. Nobody can reverse it. It's up to you for this to decide that you are going to live and understand I am in right standing with God. Nobody can reverse that from me. Nobody can take it away from me. No pastors, no deacons, no devils, no people of this world, nobody. But the devil will try to convince you, hey, you did this last week. Remember that? That was wrong. God's not going to forgive you for that. Or you did this today. Can you believe that you said this to your kids or your husband or your wife or your friends? <laughs> That's not how it works. You see, righteousness is this. This is what God created for you. What he created for you was the ability. Just close your eyes for a second. And picture this, okay? Picture standing in a throne room of a king. Covered in gold. There's just gold everywhere. It's beautiful. Just keep your eyes closed and imagine this. Because this is what Jesus did for you at the cross. This is why God did this for you. He gave you the ability to stand in the Father's presence without a sense of guilt or inferiority. He gave you the ability to stand without condemnation or the sense of sin consciousness. 
that throne room that you're standing in. And if you're still there, you can open your eyes. The throne room that you're standing in of God the Father. And it's perfect. It's perfect. What he would say to you is this. All of your sins, I don't remember. And I've chosen that. For you, I've chosen not to remember your sins because of all your sins were put away on my son once and for all. So the thing that you're holding yourself guilt, guilty over, the thing that keeps condemning you and making you feel bad and shunning Jesus and turning away, I'm not worthy of your love. That's when Jesus is reaching out to you saying, no, 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 no. That's why you're so worthy of my love. Because you're not perfect. Because you make mistakes. But I don't see you as broken. I see you as whole. Because I love you. It doesn't matter if you were addicted to drugs. It doesn't matter if if you had... uh, um, You cheated on people. It doesn't matter if you killed people. It doesn't matter. God says, I don't remember those sins for those who believe that Jesus Christ is their Lord and their Savior. Because, like we talked about, Jesus didn't just take away sin. He destroyed the power of the devil. And he did it for you as your substitute. Think of it like this, okay? Think that you're in a basketball game, okay? And you get in a little bit of foul trouble, okay? You got about three fouls. And you look over, and you see Jesus is about to come onto the court for you. So he subs you out. You're on the bench. While you're on the bench, you can't get any points. You can't get any rebounds. You can't get any steals. You can't even get any fouls. You can't. You can contribute nothing to this game because you are not on the court playing. So what Jesus does is this. Jesus says, I'm going to be your substitute, but only only here's how it's going to work. I'm going to come onto the court. Every point that I make is yours. Every assist I have is yours. Every minute that I play, it's yours. But every foul that I get, I'll take it. See, he's entering the game as your substitute, but he's giving you all the good stuff. And he made it. So it's as though we ourselves defeated Jesus because that's how he went to the cross. He went as your substitute. He went as the complete and total sin forgiveness. And he went as the total redemption of Satan and his power over you. He went there and he said, look, I'm going to do this, but I want you to know something. I'm going to take all the sin. I'm going to take all the wrath of the devil and all the anger of these demons. And I'm going to give to you my love and peace. I'm going to give you the right standing with God. And I'm going to take every single bad thing from you and for you. Because I love you. And God's not going to see your sin. God's not going to see it. And Satan has no power over you anymore in the name of Jesus. And that's what I want you to understand. It's not just the forgiveness of sins. But Jesus took the power of Satan and he took it and he crushed his head. And he said, you will no longer have dominion over my people. And he saw you with it. And he saw you in mind. And he loved you. And he said... Never again will you be able to just do whatever you want to my people. He broke that chain. He broke that curse. He delivered you into life, into his spirit. Turn turn with me to Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians 1. Verse 7, it says this. In Him, we have redemption. Keep that in your mind. In Him, we have. Hold it right there. In Him, we have redemption through His blood. The forgiveness of our sins 
according to the riches of his grace. The Bible doesn't say that we have redemption according to your works or according to how you think it should go or according to how you think if it's fair or if it's unfair. God didn't ask for your opinion in this matter. He said, in him we have. Stop right there. We have. It is a continuous, present context. We have. Right now, I have his redemption. Right now, I have his redemption. Right now, I have his redemption. Why am I pausing and saying it three times? I just want a few seconds and in between. So that 30 seconds ago when I first said it to 10 seconds ago when I ended it, I still have the same redemption, the same forgiveness. I still have the same love. It didn't leave me. It won't leave me. And you know what? Some people might say, well, Stephen, what about what about people who 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 sin and they do this? It, here's why. It's because they haven't realized how loved they are. They haven't realized the gift. Because righteousness, being in the throne room of God, where you stand every single moment of your life, and He is prepared to give to you all the desires of your heart, and He is prepared to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. He's prepared to do that because of Jesus. And in the throne room that we all stand in, the moment that we say, we just received Jesus Christ into my heart right now, that throne room that you stand in, where God is ready to do more for you, He's ready to give more for you, He's ready to accelerate you uh, supernaturally in what He's called you to do, that throne room that you stand in, you can never leave. You won't ever leave. And the more that you understand that you stand in that throne room, that you are in right standing with God, your thinking changes because you start to recognize His goodness. You start to recognize love. And when people, I've never met somebody who when they see love, feel love, know love, they don't say, I don't want it anymore. They say, that's what I've been waiting for my whole life. I've been waiting for this good, sweet, lovely, perfect love where I'm not judged and, 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 and people you know, don't, don't throw me away when I make mistakes. That's the love that I've been looking for. God, take me with it. And I want to go deeper. I want to go further. Because as you recognize and you hold on to that love of Jesus Christ, when you hold on to the for total and complete forgiveness of the sins, and when you hold on to devil, you no longer have any authority over my life. I'm going to live by what the Word of God says, and when you grab a hold of it, the sin will stop, and it'll slow down, and it'll become fewer and farther between. You will never be perfect. In fact, I remember Kobe Bryant was one of one of the, my favorite athletes of all time. Kobe got invited in to talk to the University of Alabama football team. And he's talking to him, and he's looking at him, and he says, Look, guys, every morning I wake up, I chase perfection. I go for perfection. And he says this, I know I will never be perfect but I'm going to close the gap and get as close as I possibly can. That is what it's like for you and me. As we start to grab on a, and grab a hold of his perfect love and his perfect favor and his perfect goodness and we see the forgiveness and we start to walk in it and we start to walk in the fact that Everything that we touch and do is blessed. And as we continue to do that, the sin will decrease and the, our hearts for Him will increase. And we start to do His works and we start to do what He's called us to do. And it, it might be as a teacher. It might be as a, a, a paint and body shop person. It, it might be as a... Uh, it doesn't matter what He calls you to be. But you start to do it in love. 
and you start to turn your back, and we've talked about this, the repentance, metanoia, the changing of your mind, you start turning away from the sinful things, and you focus on the total and complete forgiveness of Jesus Christ. And when the devil comes to try to disrupt your day, when he comes and tries to have a sneak attack on you, like I told you all, I think before with, with, with our second born Olivia, the devil tried to, tried to sneak attack and take her away. But we stood on the word of God. We stood on his truth of those bite-sized pills that we were taking every single day of reading his word, of just standing on his word and just trusting his word. You don't have to be a Bible scholar. You don't have to go to Bible school. God didn't put conditions on it. He just said, look, if you will know my word and you will trust that what my son did for you and he set you free, your life will be changed and I will change it forever, instantly, supernaturally. I will do so much more than you can ever ask or think. I will help you close the gap between perfection, which is Jesus, in the sinful nature of the world, I'll help you close the gap. He wants to help you close the gap. Romans 6. Romans 6, 14. 14. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. But what then? We are to sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the ones whom obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart of the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and have you been set free from sin, have become slaves to righteousness. What's Paul saying? Paul's saying this. Okay, he's saying what I'm saying. He's just saying it in Paul's way. Okay, you were once engorged and drenched in sin. You were once just in sin, a part of sin, being in sin, but the moment you turn to Jesus and you recognize his forgiveness and you, and you recognize his love, God turns you. And he says, you're no longer a slave to sin. You will never be a slave to sin again. If you will continue to listen to me, to listen to my love, to trust Jesus when he said it was finished and he took every sin for you, and if you trust it, when Jesus did that and he, and he rose again and God rose him up from the grave, that he took the, the power of the devil over your life, if you will do that, I'll close that gap for you. And you will just, you will swim and you will bask in this ocean of righteousness, of grace, of unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor. Jesus doesn't want you to try to earn his forgiveness because you won't. And you can't. He doesn't want you to do anything for it. When I was a kid, I, it's how I used to pray because I, I just didn't know any better. I didn't. I wasn't equipped to understand that. Oh God, if you do this, I'll do this. If you do this, I'll do this. I always failed. And if I went back to praying like that today, I would still always fail. Because what God did for you and for me he gave up his son he gave you love he gave you power he he took you away from being a slave a slave from the devil and his demons and sin because sin will keep you a lot longer than what you want to be It'll make you stay there. It'll make you do things that you never wanted to do. But Jesus says, hey, look to me. Look at my love. Know my love. Don't try to earn it. Don't try to deserve it. Don't, let's not go in this merit system where, 
hey, you know, Johnny, good job. Here's a sticker today. Boom, put it on your chart. That's not how he wants to operate. He wants to operate with you in this open relationship of freedom, of trust, that he has the best intention and he has the best possible life that you could ever imagine, dream of, or think. What, what keeps coming back to me right now, and we're going we're gonna to end here very shortly, what keeps coming back to me is, is the idea of this. Jesus, Jesus' desire for you is to walk in grace, to walk in love, to walk in his favor. Okay, It's to walk in his redemption. What he gave up was his life. What he gave up was himself. For your sin, and he took it all on him, it cost you nothing. It cost him everything. Okay, that, that's what... <laughs> and he wants you to understand, it's, it's this. Is the devil, his, in, his, in his tactics, in Deuteronomy 28, he talks about the devil will come against you one way, or your enemies will come against you one way, flee before you seven. But here, it's a picture of this. The devil will always come to try to infiltrate your mind. Infiltrate that you're not good enough. Infiltrate that, hey, you did this. You did that. You're a sinner. You're not any good. God's not going to love you. <laughs> that's what he's going to come to try to do. And that's what he's been doing since the beginning of time. He looked at Adam and Eve and said, hey, if you eat this fruit, you'll know what God knows. Mmm. That sounds good, right? And he paints this picture that he wants you to go against or, or, or hey, why don't you know what God knows? Or, or you know what? You don't need all that. Or he's, and, he's got, and, he's, and he's got people preaching messages that are just, hey, you know what? <clears throat> what happened in the Bible isn't for us today. We've moved on away from it. Not true. But as the devil comes against you and you remind him of who you are because of Jesus, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am in right standing with God. I am in the throne room of grace because of Jesus Christ. And you devil have no power over me. You devil will not... You will not lead me astray or down to sin or back into addiction or into cheating or into, into taking or into killing. You will not lead me there because I've been redeemed. Jesus gave himself up for me. I'm in right standing with God. And the obliteration of the devil comes in. And this is how I think of it. It's, it's almost like if you, if you throw a hand grenade... And at its contact point, it blows up and the shrapnel just goes away from it like this in all directions. That's how it is when we tell the devil what the Word of God says about us and who we are in Jesus Christ. When he comes knocking to tell you that you're something else and you say, no, that's not true. This is who I am. Here's the power that I have. Ready for this? Mark 16, 17 through 20. It says this, And these signs will accompany those who believe. Ready? Those who believe in Jesus, that He is Lord and His goodness and His worth. Okay, here's what here's the signs that follow. You ready? In my name, in Jesus' name, they will cast out demons. It's the very first thing He says is going to happen. So when these demons and these devils try to convince you, it's no, this is what's going to happen, devil. I will cast you out in the name of Jesus. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. This is all because of Jesus. This is all because of him going to the cross. This is what he's given to you. This is the power that you hold. If you tap into this power, things are really going to change in your life. 
And he goes on to say this. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up to heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And when he sat down at the right hand of God, it's as though we sat down at the right hand of God. Because remember, he's our substitute. He stands in for us and he gives us all the good and he takes away all the bad. And they went out and they preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. As they went out and they preached and they preached in the name of Jesus, demons were demons were cast out, people were set free, people were healed, all because of this. They got a hold of the message. They got a hold of the word of God. They got a hold of how good Jesus is. They got a hold of his redemption. They got a hold that they are redeemed. They are righteous. Doesn't matter if you're a Jew, if you're a Gentile. It doesn't matter who you are. Jesus, when he died, he said it was finished. It was for every single person. He made it available to every single person. That means that we get to walk and we get to step on the enemy's head. That means that we don't need to be afraid of disease. We don't need to be afraid of lack. We get to walk in a supernatural wholeness. We get to walk in a supernatural world. We get to walk in the kingdom of God that Jesus brought down because of his presence. You've been made new. You've been made... Oh, Jesus took it all. In the redemption life, in his redemptive love for you, you have power in your life. I got to look at my daughters today and I got to say, when I said Jesus, Jesus said, didn't, didn't he let them take him. And, and Regan says to me, so daddy, we, we have power or he has power over if he lives or dies. And I said, yeah, so do you. You have the same power. It's been given to you by Jesus. It is written in his word. And the devil is going to try to convince you, don't go to the word. It's not going to help you. It's not going to help you. You should watch TV. He does it to me. I love watching this uh, uh, show, Marvel, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I like watching that show. It's really, I, I, I like it. Okay. And there are nights that I know I, need, I, I want to sit down and I want to study and I hear this voice. I'll just relax and watch TV. Not that TV is bad. Not that relaxing is bad. It's not what I'm saying. Okay, I'm not saying that. But I know my calling. My calling is to be in this word. My calling is to know this word. And, and that's my calling. My calling is to grab a hold of what he has for me so that I can preach that and share that around the world. But if you take time throughout your day and you tap into what he says is yours, his redemptive power, See, I, I'm somebody who likes power. I've always liked power. As I became an athlete and I learned about lifting and working out, okay, I started to learn about what power is and how it's different than strength and how it's different than speed. Power is explosiveness. It's your explosiveness off the start. It's your explosiveness off the ground. Power creates the speed and power can create strength. And I got to love, I, I started loving power. I love power. And you see how people abuse their power because of the position that they hold. Or you see how people can make a huge influence because of their power. But if you will tap in and grab a hold of the power of Jesus Christ and his resurrection and his redemptive love for you, you will start and begin to trample over every single principality, every single darkness. You will just tap into his, his redemptive love. And here's what's going to happen to you. You ready for this? Last verse, and I promise I'm done. John 15. Don't turn there. Don't look it up. Write it down if you want. And read it later. John 15, verse 5, 7, and 8. I am the vine, you are the branch. Whoever abides in me and I am him. I will bear much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. 
By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. Jesus is saying this to us and for us. If you will tap into his redemptive love, if you will tap into his word, and you will make it true in your life, God will get the glory for the favor and the blessings that come in your life. The doctor may say, you've got five months to live. But your God says with long life, he will satisfy you and show you, every, and show you his salvation. And that all who came to him who were sick were healed. But oppressed by the devil were delivered. If you will tap into this, if you will grab a hold of this love, your life will change forever. Because it brings him glory. You see, there's no tree that's, any tree that has a sick trunk cannot have healthy leaves. It can't bear any fruit. But when the trunk is strong, when the roots are strong, when all of it is strong, the tree itself is very beautiful. It blossoms. And it bears beauty and it bears fruit. That's what God has for you. That's how he looks at you. If you connect with him, he is the healthy vine. His word is power. His word is love. His word is perfection. And what Jesus did at the cross for you was set you free from the oppression of the devil. And he set you free from all the sin that you did commit and that you may will, that you will commit. You're free. You stand on the throne of God. So, like I promised, we're going to end here. We're going to pray if you have never received Jesus Christ into your heart. And you say, you know what, Stephen? I want that. I want I want to know his love. I want to know his grace. I want to know his favor. I want him as my life. And I want to know his power over my life and over the devil. I want it. And pray this prayer with me. Very simple. You ready? Father, I thank you for your son. I thank you that I have been redeemed that Jesus took my place. He is my substitute. He took every sin. He took every disease. And he gave me health. He gave me life. And he gave me freedom. And right now, I receive Jesus into my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that, you are a child of God, and you get to walk in this wonderful, unmerited, undeserved, unmerited favor of God. Let's take communion. Jesus, we just thank you so much for this bread, this body that you should take. It's broken for us. Jesus, this body that is health and it is life to all of our flesh. And I just thank you that right now, in the name of Jesus, from the top of our head to the very soles of our feet, Every tissue, every function, every fiber, every bone, every organ of our body is completely healthy and strong. And right now, in Jesus' name, we just declare health and life. And right now, if there's anything going on in your body, just say, Jesus, thank you. I am healed and delivered from, and go ahead and tell him. Thank you, Jesus. You pinned it all to the cross. You pinned it all to the cross. And I'm going to declare this right now over my wife and over my child that she is carrying. Father, for just health and life for her pregnancy and for our baby. Health and life because it's what you gave to us. We just receive it and we just decree it and command it in Jesus' name. Take and eat. Now the cup. Jesus, I thank you for this blood. This sin-free, disease-free, poverty-free life. This blood that washed every single sin whiter than snow. This blood that redeemed us. We are redeemed from the curse of the law. We are redeemed from the power of the devil. We are redeemed from sin and death. We are redeemed. You are our substitute. Your blood washed it all away. You wiped our slate clean. And, God, and, our, and, our, and the Father said, 
I will by no means remember their sin anymore because of you. And we just take this right now in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you so much for joining us. You are so loved. If if you have been impacted by the word, you've been impacted by God, write to us. You can write to us on Facebook or Instagram, or you can write to us at gracefreedomchurch at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. Thank you so much. I'm just going to pray for you, then we're going to get out of here, and I hope you continue to have an amazing Easter. Father, I just thank you for every single person under the sound of my voice. Father, I thank you that it's because of your son, Jesus. They are redeemed. They are loved. They are set free from the power of the devil and the evil one. They have been set free unto the spirit of life and of truth, all because of your son. I just thank you so much, Father, that you are just waking people up. You are shaking people up. You are bringing them, Father, supernaturally in an accelerated fashion into what you've called them to. And I just praise you for it. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Happy Easter. We'll see you again.